behind the scenes while you are on a commercial break. We are just speaking in the studio about you know the potentiality and likelihood of Kenyan football stars representing us on an international platform regarding you know advertising you know Kenyan tourism and uh, representing our brands internationally and of course some names were getting thrown uh, led by Victor Wanyama, Michael Ingenio Lunga, I don't know but be part of the program join the conversation as well talk to us what's your position regarding the same Brian, do we have what it takes, you know, to front a name that, uh, you know, can advertise Kenya on a global map? Mm, or I, probably with time we can have one? Uh, with, uh, with time, I'm sure we can, we can have one. Even now we have, uh, we have people. But, um, yeah, I think the conversation uh, behind, the, behind the scenes was, uh, was interesting. It depends on what, what do you want to sell? What yeah. Are, what are you marketing and uh, is the person that you want to front, for example, as a brand ambassador for um, whatever you are doing uh, suitable for that? Uh, you go into athletics and I uh, look at somebody like uh, Eliud, uh, Eliud uh, Kipchoge. I think there's been um, Isuzu, is now the brand ambassador for, for Isuzu, so it's, it's relevant for that. Uh, for that brand, it, uh, it works well. When it comes to promoting our tourism um, here, uh, perhaps uh, they would look at somebody like Wanyama who is, um, who is out there consistently and uh, help him or package him in a way that he can, he can sell the country. And his name is allegorical too. To, to, to <laughs> but, but then again, it, 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 it depends on how you, how you you're, like you said, education is also very, very important here. Um, how do you package this person? Uh, to be able to articulate uh, whatever issues that you want him to address. So it could, be, it could be issues of climate change, for example. We are seeing more and more of these things. It could be something like uh, wildlife conservation. So you need to be able to, to work with an individual to, to sell what it is that the country or the continent uh, wants to sell. Uh, but at the same time, I want to go back and, uh, and challenge, and challenge um, uh, Kenya and the continent. You know, we are, we are only always looking at, um, as, at players as, uh, as brand ambassadors. How come we don't look and also look at the people who are managing the sport? Because um, more, more often than, than not, you find that in football, especially, these are people who have brought disrepute to the, to the country to the, and to the, to, the, to the continent. Why can't we think about changing that? Because it doesn't matter how good uh, Wanyama does out there trying to sell the country, and people come to the country and they find the football here is a, is a mess. You, you, you don't have the credibility. Imagine if football in Kenya was thriving and uh, we are filling stadiums every other weekend and still we have our Nyama and our Lungas out there marketing our, our country and our football. How powerful would that be? So we also need to look at ourselves, be it in the media, be it us who are trying to be entrepreneurial and manage that side of the game, we are all brand ambassadors. You know, the event we have just organized, the inaugural Africa Football Business Summit, it got international coverage. If we had not done it well, what kind of image would that portray? It wouldn't have attracted global attention. Exactly. We had people from AS Monaco, we had people from TSG Hoffenheim, East the Law Business School, Parmas. These are all international brands that were represented in that, in that room that I said, a job well done. We will come back next year. So it's not just the players. Let's not focus too much on the players and give them a lot of pressure to sell something that is not sellable. Let's work on developing the industry here and changing the reputation that the game has in the country on the continent. Brian, you got overwhelming passion for football and you started this at a tender age. Unlike, you know, what we've witnessed locally, people who got interest for football, you know, starting a club, an academy, which is out of daycare. I don't know, what drove you to uh, venture into football entrepreneurship? Um, one, we don't hear about sports entrepreneurship, uh, 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 entrepreneurship on the continent. It's something we don't address. Even though, uh, like you said, people are setting up clubs and they're setting up academies. These are entrepreneurial ventures, but they don't think of themselves as such. So this is um, a gap you kind of um, realize. Uh, the other thing is that um, I came to the realization, you know, having played the game very competitively, both here and, uh, and abroad. Yes, we have so much passion, we have so much talent, we spend a lot of time and energy in the sport, but just 
looking back I, I started to, to wonder how come this spot is not creating opportunity for our young people. You move around this city of Nairobi and uh, you look at uh, you, the average footballers. Let's not talk about those who are playing at the, at, the, uh, at the KPL, but the majority down there. You talk to the young people who are trying to make it and you see a struggle, a struggle that needs to be addressed. And the only way we're going to address this is to bring entrepreneurship, to bring sanity in the management of the game in the continent. It's not about how many players we can try to push into the European market. For me, that's not a sustainable business model. How many players can you sell in a year? Maybe one or two, if you are, if you are very lucky, if you're running a top-notch uh, academy. And then you wait uh, for how long before you sell another player. In the meantime, you're wasting thousands of talents going through your hands, but since they don't have opportunity to play abroad, then th they will give up on the spot. And that results in another issue that maybe we need another forum to discuss. But that's, that's really what drove me to set up the Football Foundation for Africa. How do we drive more resources into grassroots football so that we start to create a sustainable um, uh, football uh, ecosystem? So my passion actually now goes beyond just football. For me, it's a passion for the youths of Africa because I feel we are disadvantaged and we have a great platform that we can use to empower ourselves and to empower our communities. And for me, that is football. Uh, for World Football Governing uh, Body FIFA, of course, you know, suspended Kenya of uh, government interference and sporting activities. But, you know, that will not probably be the talk of uh, our discussion this particular afternoon. But, you know, World Cup is coming up in Qatar later this year, starting next year, starting next month until December and Africa is represented by, you know, able nations led by, you know, the black stars of Ghana, Senegal, the defending champions for Afcon, Egypt are also there. What are our chances, continental chances? Because it's uh, been at all orders, defying all odds and probably getting to the uh, semi-final stage. <laughs> is this time ours? Um... Or we failed capitalizing on home soil in 2010. <laughs> I, th I think it will it will be difficult. Maybe <laughs> you're being realistic. I'm being realistic. Maybe maybe quarterfinals. If we are if we are lucky to have a team in the in the semifinal, that uh, I think it would be a job uh, well done. But um, that's that's why I say we have not really tried to develop um, the game holistically. Yes. We're just thinking of of the talents. Look at a team like uh, like Senegal. You know, uh, world class stars. Yes, they are taking a team to the to the World Cup that everybody is playing abroad. But do you know even one club from Senegal? Can you name a club from Senegal right now or a player playing? Oh the, my goodness! In the Senegalese league, see that's that's the challenge. And that's have. the truth, by the way. I can't yeah. remember naming. You a can't Senegalese name a club. Senegalese club. Uh, so we haven't developed home. We haven't developed home, and the few who are making out, we try to um, we push them to a pedestal. We try to say this is this is our only. A sign of uh, success. Yes. You talk to people in Nigeria. Yes. They will talk. Uh, they'll tell you how badly their their football is doing. Yes. Despite them having hundreds of players in different leagues yes. in Europe. Yeah. So it is really important that we start to focus on building sustainable, which is one of the top class, strengthening our own leagues. Tanzania is trying. They are doing quite well, and we can see they have even overtaken Kenya in terms of. Uh, performance, but how many other countries are, have taken that approach to strengthen their own leagues, to strengthen their clubs, so that they can even package their football to sell it not only on the continent but also um, outside. So that's that's the challenge for us in terms of our chances at the World Cup. Again, quarterfinal uh, for me would be the, the realistic because when these players get to the World Cup, it's uh, they have come from this club, this club. They don't have that pride to play in nation that, uh, for example, they have to play for their clubs where they are. Uh, they Club are football animal. is more lucrative. It's more <laughs> lucrative and um, we have all been directed towards, you need to play pro uh, for you to be considered a success. If you're playing locally, then you haven't gotten to that, uh, that place. I think Anthony Buffon mentioned during, uh, during the summit, the last player we celebrated that was playing in an Afri African league Yes. was Abu Trika of Egypt. Yes. We've not had another one that we can celebrate globally. And that's the challenge for Africa. By the virtue that you're coming from Kenya and you're starting it at home, I don't know, what are you doing to, you know, 
put Kenyan football to another level because I am sure your priority revolves around the entire continent. But you know, coming from Kenya, you must also be being a great patriot and uh, doing something that will enable Kenya to make strides as far as football development is concerned. Um, for me, first of all, uh, I, I have to um, say that I, I, I try as much as possible to package myself as African, as Pan-African. Uh, but that doesn't defeat the fact that I come from, uh, I come from Kenya. Yes. And um, the organization Football Foundation for Africa is domiciled here. And I believe it can be a great asset for the country in terms of attracting people um, uh, here, be it people who are already well versed in, uh, in football development, be it financial resources, because what you realize again when you're in the industry, there's so much interest in Africa. People want to invest in African football, yes. but they don't have the right vehicles on the continent uh, to help them. And this is what the FFA provides. I've had conversation with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, with the Ministry of Sports, and I tell them, this is an asset that I believe uh, could be um, useful uh, to the country. When you start talking about uh, sports diplomacy, uh, now football is uh, more and more used as a, as a tool for, to demonstrate uh, uh, soft power. And these are things that we can use to, to brand the country. We had guests from over, over 30 countries uh, here in Nairobi to attend the Africa Football Business Summit. That is something the government can tap into not just for tourism, but also for development, because this is knowledge, you see. Uh, we had um, East De Loan Business School from Spain. They have given scholarship worth over 70,000 euros. Yes. And these, I'm trying to tell the universities here that attended, can you please get your students to take advantage of these kind of um, uh, offerings? Uh, but I don't limit it to Kenya, as I said. For me, it's about building Africa because I think we need to work together more. If we, if we work as Kenya alone, it's, it's, it's going to be very difficult. You know, uh, look at now the World Cup is 48 teams. It's a collective responsibility. Yes. What, what are the chances of an African country being able to host a World Cup with 48 teams? Almost nil. So we need to work together, for example. South Africa can't? Rich, I don't think. 48 teams? Very difficult. <laughs> the last time he did it was 32, right? 32. Yeah. And the out of uh, those West African nations, Nigeria, we get to be told that, you know, they got uh, might infrastructure. Um, Having widely traveled, have mm -hmm. you ascertained the same? Um, not really. I haven't been to Nigeria, uh, to be honest. But when you talk to them, they don't have the North African nations, Morocco. North Africa and Morocco is doing very well. I think it's one of the countries we should emulate when it comes to football development. Government has made it uh, one of their priorities to develop uh, sports. And I think uh, they stand the best chance of hosting the next African uh, World Cup. But uh, that is something also that needs to be explored to see whether it makes uh, economic and social sense for the continent. Thank you, Brian, for joining us this particular afternoon to talk about you know, the business of football in Africa. Of course, Brian Wesala is the football entrepreneur and also the founder and CEO of you know, Football Foundation for Africa, a body that is mandated to uh, sh uh, push and advocate for growth of football in Africa and even beyond our borders. Thank you for joining us and it's been a pleasure hosting you. Thank you very much, Maxwell. Of course, we've been talking about you know, the business of football in Africa as a continent and way forward regarding growth of the game, even ahead of FIFA World Cup set for Qatar and K K K Africa getting represented by five uh, nations, unfortunately, East Africa, we're getting uh, represented by none, and Kenya continue to miss in action. Hopefully, one day in the future, we will grace the global shoppies as well. Don't go away, stay tuned, the touchline continues.